Welcome to The Finish Line by So Very Easy. My name is Laura and The Finish Line is the series all about finishing our quilt tops. And last month we did a really simple design called the double C. What's nice about that double C is you can always add to it. And today we're going to turn that C into little flowers. The quilt top has a lot of fun fabrics, so I've decided to choose some fun threads to go along with it. The top, I'm going to use a beautiful purple thread from Filtech that's a glide thread and it's called Mulberry. It's going to have a lot of fun on that top. And even though the back of that quilt is green, I'm going to use a nice bright orange called Marigold. It's just going to be a lot of fun to see when it's done. So let's get started. The double C pattern consists of a C. We start with the letter C and then we're going to go back around the outside of that C. We can continue making that C going in all different directions. And this is a great starting point for many different designs. So we're going to turn these C's into flowers. We still get to start with that double C. From there, we're going to make little petals going around that second C. Then once more, we're going to echo those little petals. Do another C and go on the outside of that C and make some little petals. Go back and trace those petals. We can always go right over some other petals to get into another area. So we can travel following these little petals. We can do a lot of petals, a few petals, and always traveling to where we need to go next. A C, follow the outside C, and some petals. It will be a lot easier when we do our C's to be sure to go on the outside of the C. If we do come into the inside, it's a little bit more difficult to come out. We will have to go all the way around and make the little petals, but it will still work. And then follow those petals back. And that's all there is to turning that double C into some little flowers. To save some time on basting, I have used a fusible batting, which means my back and my top are all fused together on that batting and it already comes with the fusible attached, so I don't have to worry about anything. I also like to imagine this quilt in four pieces. I'm going to quilt one quarter, move to the second, go up and then around. So I'm working the quilt in a circle, but I'm still only imagining the quilt in four pieces. That way it's just a lot easier for me to think about this quarter than it is the entire thing. So it doesn't matter the size, I break it up into smaller areas where I can handle it. And I always start with bringing up the bobbin thread to the top. And by holding that thread out of the way, I don't have to worry about any tangling underneath. You can use gloves or anything that you want to quilt with. But for today, I'm just going to use these little grips that have been cut out of bottom of carpet sliders. And these just prevent the carpets from sliding on your floor. You can get a lot of these cut out out of one piece. And they do hold that fabric well. I find the faster you move the machine, the bigger your flowers are going to be. If you slow down, the flowers can be a little smaller. The Bernina does have a stitch regulator, so that petal has nothing to do with the speed of the quilt. It's all up to how fast I move my hands. So I can put my foot all the way on the pedal, relax, and start quilting. I will have two lights show up, then I'll be ready to go. And start. My first C, go back around the outside of the C, and then I'm going to make these little tiny petals going around that C. And then trace back over top of those petals. Now I've made my first flower. From there, I'm going to do another C and another flower. 
that inside C, go outside that C, and my little petals. Go back over top of those petals. I'm just going to keep making C's and petals. And those petals turn into little flowers. I can always repeat one of the petals from another flower to give myself another direction. And back over that flower. Another C and then off I go. All these little petals. If there's an area that we need to fill in, we can do a series of C's filling that in. And then when we come out, we do a larger C and make that floral. Unless you look really close, you're not going to see that you have all those little C's built up, but it will fill in those little holes. I'm just gonna go back and forth, filling in that C area. Now start my new C. And you can see that it really just blends in with the rest of the work. So the purple on the front really blends in with all of these colors. And on the back you barely can see that orange, but it's enough that we can see it and we can see that we've turned those little C's into little flowers. We can see where those cute little C's have turned into flowers. And here's an area where we've had to travel to get to another area, but it just looks like it's part of one of the flowers. And here's this area where we've had to do a couple of C's to fill in this space. And they just look like the ends of the flowers. Along the outside, I've traveled and repeated some of the shapes in order to fill in this space. And I do like to make sure I have one stitch somewhere right in that corner so that it will hold it down when I go to trim it. And that's all there is to taking that double C and turning them into flowers. Those little double C flowers can be made a lot smaller if you want to really see those flowers or a lot bigger, depending on what you want to quilt. It's a fun way of turning that C into flowers. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.